For as amazing as the Warhammer 40k setting is, its games are kind of all over the place. For every good one that comes out, we get about 10 that are absolutely awful. But there's a new one that hopes to change that. And of all things, it's a free-to-play mobile game. It's called Warhammer 40,000 Tacticus, and it's set in the grimdark future. In the game, you take control of up to five characters from eight of Warhammer's most iconic factions, including the stalwart Ultramarines, the sinister forces of the Black Legion, and the undying Necron dynasties, just to name a few, with many more factions currently in development. But how does Warhammer Tacticus stack up against other similar styled games? Is it the greatest Warhammer game of all time, or just another dud in a long line of budget titles that the franchise seems to be stuck in forever? Well, today we're gonna get to the bottom of that and find out just how good Tacticus really is. But full disclosure, this is a sponsored video. I downloaded Tacticus about a month ago to do a sponsored segment for them. But after that was over, I ended up actually really liking the game. I've logged in every day since launch and I've played about 100 hours. I even managed to climb my way up the leaderboards and ranked as number two in the entire world in the arena mode. So needless to say, I've played a lot of Tacticus. So I reached out to Snowprint Studios and told them that I wanted to make a video on their game. They didn't care what type of video it was, whether it be an overview, a breakdown of all the factions, some type of guide, or pretty much anything I wanted to make. I told them I wanted to do a review because there's a lot of stuff I like about this game and I want to see it succeed, but there's also a lot of stuff I don't like and that I planned on talking about all of it. They were surprisingly really enthusiastic about this and said that the honesty would ultimately help make the game better, which was honestly pretty cool of them. So with that out of the way, let's get into the review. First and foremost, Tacticus is, well, a tactics game. A game type that although Warhammer 40k is the perfect setting for, the franchise has definitely seen a lot of games like this. So what makes Tacticus stand out from the rest? Tacticus is a mobile game and feels right at home on the platform. The game would function quite well on consoles or PC if we ever end up getting a port, but the fast-paced gameplay seems like it was designed primarily with phones in mind. The game features 40 different playable characters across eight factions, each with their own unique special abilities and playstyle. Each of the characters has a unique passive ability, as well as a special move that can be used once per battle. Both of these can be ranked up by using faction-specific badges that you acquire through gameplay. Every tile on the map has different passive stats that make the terrain incredibly important in harder missions. A barbed wire will cause you to take 50% increased damage and stall your movement, but characters that can fly can move across them as if they weren't there. Terrain has multiple different height levels as well. If you're attacking from high ground, you get a bonus to damage. Tall grass can reduce the amount of hits that your character takes, but can also be set on fire by flamer weapons. Because all of these different passive systems work together, it creates a gameplay experience that's incredibly simple and easy to learn, but has an enormous amount of complexity hidden under the surface that leaves plenty of room to get better at. There are tons of different character archetypes represented here, from snipers to psychers, summoners, assassins, tanks, buffing units, and debuffers. There's a bunch of strange characters as well that don't really fit into one of these archetypes, but have some pretty interesting gameplay implications, such as an orc squig rider, whose special ability sends him careening in a straight line, pushing all the other characters he collides with out of the way. Then there's a summoner type unit, the Overlord of the Necrons, that can summon in a Necron warrior for every one of your units that has been killed, causing a match that's gone incredibly badly to immediately turn around. It's actually really impressive just how different all of these characters feel while being remarkably simple. Is the game as complicated as some flagstone PC tactical games? No, but I don't think it needs to be. Complication for complication's sake doesn't make something better, it just makes it more complicated. And I feel Tacticus is exactly as complicated as it needs to be for a pick up and go style mobile game. The gameplay is broken up across several different game modes, including the campaigns, raids, onslaught, salvage run, arena, and whatever special event happens to be going on. But at the end of the day, this is a free to play mobile game. Microtransactions can cause a really great game like this to be completely ruined. So let's talk a little bit about how Tacticus monetizes itself. The microtransactions here are kind of a mixed bag. There's a lot of good and some bad. The bad is pretty straightforward, so I'll get that out of the way first. In my experience, the vast majority of things that you can actually spend money on are not really worth it. The campaigns are $30 each, and when I first saw that, I laughed, as it was kind of ridiculous. But I noticed, as I kept playing, each time I unlocked one of the characters included in the campaign packs, the price would reduce. So it went from $30 when I had none of the characters, to $15 when I had one of them, all the way down to five when I was only missing one. If you manage to unlock all three characters included in a campaign pack, then the campaign will automatically unlock. Other games would still charge you to unlock the campaign, 
even though you have all of the required characters. So on one hand, the price to unlock it right away is kind of ridiculous, but the fact that you can definitely do it on your own for free shows a remarkable amount of restraint from the developers. The chests really don't seem to give you anything of real value, and all of the upgrade packs give you shards, orbs, or badges that you can earn through gameplay at a steady rate. The only thing that I spent money on that I felt like I got any actual value out of were the requisitions, because this is where you unlock additional characters and thus additional campaigns. But just like with the other microtransactions, you can get requisitions just by completing your daily missions. Buying a bunch of requisitions at a time in order to quickly unlock characters is an option for people who want to spend money on this game, but the game gives you so many different ways to progress towards unlocking a character that I don't really think it's necessary. The relic chests and things like that probably provide some kind of benefit to the people who are way at the top, but I've found that you can get all of these rewards from just playing the game. If there's a particular upgrade material that you need, it makes way more sense just to find a mission that actually has that as a reward and spend your raid tickets there. You have a much higher chance of actually getting the thing that you want. It's a known outcome versus the possibility that it might show up in a chest. A chest that costs money. So I really honestly just don't see the point of these. I don't see who these are for. They don't really help you progress in any meaningful way. So it's like, hey, these relic chests are here and we're charging a premium for it, but it's kind of a luxury product that you don't really need. Other mobile games would try to make you feel like if you don't buy these stupid things, then you're going to fall behind. They'll throw you into PVP matches against whales who have spent thousands of dollars to make you feel like you have to spend money in order to compete. So far, the PVP mode in the game has only been an event that lasts for like a day or so, and the developers cap everyone who participates in it at the exact same level. So the only PVP advantage is based on what characters you have, the most OP of which being pretty common, and most people have them unlocked. Ironically, the legendary characters like Abaddon, Marnia, Celestine, and Typhus, just to name a few, are actually pretty awful in PvP. It may seem counterintuitive, but I'm actually really impressed by this, that the big flashy expensive items in the shop that are super overpriced aren't even really worth it. This drastically reduces the pressure to actually buy them. So if I'm gonna give an honest review of the microtransactions, I would much rather have a bunch of things that you can buy that are borderline worthless versus having amazing microtransactions that you feel are required to actually play. So getting off of the microtransactions, let's actually talk about the game. The raid mode sees you assemble a dream team with no limitations on what characters you can bring. This means you can mix the Ultramarines with the Black Legion, or take a bunch of orcs alongside your Necrons. It may not make a lot of sense lore-wise, but it is admittedly pretty cool. Despite raids and other games normally being a big multiplayer type system, in Tacticus, you fight the boss solo and have five turns to do as much damage as you can. Everyone in the guild's damage is recorded and updates in real time. After somebody finally manages to kill the boss, everyone in the guild gets the rewards, and then the next raid boss immediately becomes available. The rewards are decent, and I appreciate that the best player and the worst player all get to share in the spoils equally. Additionally, raid bosses at much higher difficulties do drop better loot, but it's not substantially better. At best, you're just getting a couple of extra shards. The guilds that are full of high-level players will certainly be able to kill more bosses and thus get more chests. But Tacticus is a game that is absolutely chock full of chests, so it never really feels like it's pressuring you to spend money in order to put up bigger numbers. Another one of the game types is known as Onslaught, and it's basically Tacticus's version of a horde mode. It sees you fighting off waves of Tyranids. This mode is fun and has a lot of potential. The only problem that I have with it is it never really provides much of a challenge. Even having just grinded out the Imperium side over and over and having pushed into a pretty high level of difficulty, comparatively, the enemies are still only doing a couple of points of damage. Even in the rare instance when one of my party members ends up getting killed, the game immediately gives you the opportunity to swap them out at no penalty with somebody that you left on the bench. It's a fun little once or twice a day kind of mode that gives you some decent rewards, but I do wish that it was just a little bit more challenging. Likewise, the salvage run mode sees you running around the board collecting treasure. Each round has more treasure drop onto the field, and you have to send your people in to collect it while killing any orcs that spawn. It's a fun quick way to get some extra items, but much like Onslaught, doesn't really provide much of a challenge. The campaigns, however, are where the real meat of Tacticus's gameplay lies. There are three different campaigns, the Indominus Crusade featuring the Ultramarines and the Necrons, the Fall of Cadia, which pits the Black Legion against the Astra Militarum, and Warzone Octarius, which sees the Orcs take on the Black Templar. Each of the three separate campaigns features a mirror mode, which allows you to switch sides. The first batch of missions are very easy and exist to familiarize you with your faction's mechanics. Your characters level up quickly and you get a ton of rewards before the difficulty starts to steadily ramp up. 
The missions seem pretty balanced, but you'll eventually hit several that have a major spike in difficulty. In most mobile games, this difficulty spike is so aggressive that the only way to progress any further is by going and grinding for weeks or forking over a bit of cash. Now, don't get me wrong. There are definitely some missions in the campaign that feel like they simply exist to stall your progress, but I would say that the vast majority of them in my experience are a false wall. They seem incredibly difficult at first, but they have a way to win as long as your characters are a semi-appropriate level. Whether that be by taking advantage of the terrain, eliminating key threats first, switching out the characters that you're using, or even sacrificing a character with a high block rate to absorb some incoming shots. One battle in particular that I got stuck on was in the Fall of Cadia campaign. The mission featured nothing but LAS cannons with the Overwatch ability, meaning that even if it's your turn, if you enter their threat range, they'll immediately fire on you. When I saw this, I was like, how am I supposed to win? If I take a step out of my deployment zone, I'll instantly explode. And I did multiple times, but through trial and error, I realized that if I sacrifice a character to absorb some incoming shots and then moved my obliterator into the exact same spot and used his special move, he puts a little bit of damage on everything in range and reduces all of their damage on the following turn. This significantly reduced the damage my team would be taking and allowed me to win the mission. There's little things like that throughout the campaign that once you figure out how to actually deal with a mission that seems impossible, you feel a really strong sense of accomplishment after figuring it out. Each block of the campaign features a number of different missions with a boss battle at the end. The boss battles feature one of the playable characters from the opposing faction. And once they have been beaten, you can farm the mission for their shards, giving you another way to progress towards getting a specific character. Overall, I've really enjoyed my time with each of the campaigns. Each mission is a lot of fun and has a lot of different ways to approach it. There's a lot of dice rolls happening behind the scene, so there are times when your enemy will get really lucky crits, or the Necrons will just keep resurrecting way more often than they should, which can create some feels badsies when you lose because of this. But since the missions last about three minutes max, with many of them being able to be completed in under a minute, Resetting and trying again is quick and painless. Those random rolls can also end up working in your favor as well. When you select a mission, if you've achieved three medals in it already, you can raid it instead of playing it. This will automatically complete the mission for you and give you its rewards, a convenient way of leveling up your characters. Every mission can be raided 10 times each day and requires one of Tacticus's resources known as a raid ticket. I very much enjoy this system as I'm the type of player that loves min-maxing all of my characters and having to replay the same mission 100 times over would get super old super fast. That being said, the system isn't perfect. You have another resource in the game known as energy. Missions use six energy and you regenerate it by one point every five minutes. This means I can normally get a solid hour or so of gameplay in the campaign before being forced to switch off to other modes. However, this is one of my biggest problems with Tacticus. Raiding doesn't just require the raid ticket, but also uses the same amount of energy as if you had actually played the mission. So when I'm grinding out certain items by spam clicking the raid button, I consume all of my energy in less than 30 seconds and then have to wait eight hours or so before I can actually play the game. This is beyond frustrating and makes the raid tickets borderline worthless. I raid all the time, yet my number of raiding tickets keeps going up faster than I can actually spend them. Hopefully Snowprint will examine this in the future and remove the energy cost on raiding because as it stands, they're a worthless resource as the energy spent is the actual tax on using the system. The special events range kind of all over the place and since launch, we've seen a few different types. And normally they take the form of a set of missions based around a single character. Even if you don't have that character unlocked, you can still play as them. Not only do these missions have a metal system much like the campaign does, but you also have a couple of additional rules that if you follow them and manage to complete them, you can score some additional points and unlock more rewards. These range from winning the battle without taking any damage, winning in a certain amount of turns, deploying no units that can fly, no units that can deploy summons, no units with power weapons, etc., etc. It adds a fun little extra level of challenge to the missions, and the extra points allow you to get additional chests. Through the special events system, we're seeing Tacticus experiment with live PvP, and the PvP mode is kind of a mixed bag. The good is that everybody is capped at the same level, meaning that the people who have actually spent money on the game and way over level the character don't actually have an advantage. This is a really good way of doing PVP, but at the moment, most players end up just pushing to right outside each other's threat range and then spam skipping their turn, trying to bait the other person into stepping forward, which means their entire team can attack that one character at the same time or use it as an anchor point to get all of their summons off. So PVP matches are normally determined by who gets to attack first. So as fun as the PVP is, it does need to be adjusted a little bit. 
The final game mode is known as Arena, which, despite its name, isn't actually a PvP mode. You assemble a team of five characters and go up against other players' teams, but those players aren't controlling them. This is a mode where you can get a lot of really good rewards really quickly, and it allows you to see what characters you may not have unlocked yet are actually capable of. It also offers a pretty unique challenge, as all of these characters are normally considered bosses in the campaign mode. There are a couple of things that you can do that substantially make the arena easier. The biggest tip that I can give here is to skip your first turn and let the computer-controlled opponents come to you. Much like the 40k tabletop game, whoever ends up getting the first strike is often the winner. So if you're playing on a larger map and none of your characters are going to be able to get a hit in on your opponent, there's no point in moving forward. Make them come to you and then strike with your entire team. This won't always work on the smaller maps, but on the medium to large size one is a good tactic for dealing with harder matchups. Even being able to play around the computer's weaknesses, it does offer a decent level of challenge when compared to the other game modes. So it gets a thumbs up from me. I actually really enjoy the arena. And as of the time of recording this video, I was actually ranked number two in the entire world. Whether this is a big accomplishment or not, I'm not really sure. But I've never been number two in the world at something, so damn it, I'm gonna celebrate it. Warhammer 40,000 Tacticus is a mobile 40k game that is better than it has any right to be. All of the modes available right now are engaging and fun, even the ones that are pretty simplistic and not very challenging. There is always something to do, a mission to accomplish, a character to power up, arena battles to fight, or raid bosses to go up against. The microtransactions do not feel predatory like in other games, although they are definitely there. So it's a weird conundrum of very little value for money spent on microtransactions, but they also aren't mandatory for gameplay. A lot of other mobile games will have a PvP mode and throw you up against whales who have spent thousands of dollars on the game. They do this to make you feel like you have to spend money in order to play. I've also seen games that have multiplayer raids make the rewards substantially better in each tier, so you feel like if you're not pulling your weight, your guild will get angry at you, which thus pressures you into spending money. So many mobile games play this weird psychological game with their players to guilt them into spending money, and it's incredibly refreshing that Tacticus doesn't do this. The game isn't perfect. It has a baffling energy system, a non-existent story, no voice acting, difficulty walls that, even though can normally be overcome, with some good old-fashioned critical thinking, sometimes really are just a massive increase in difficulty designed to stall your progress. All in all, I think the good vastly outweighs the bad here, and from talking to the devs, they all seem like they're incredibly passionate about Warhammer. I've spoken to them numerous times and reminisced with them about the good old days of 4th edition. I think that passion really shines through in the game. Rather than them just being a bunch of faceless suits that don't know anything about 40k and are trying to exploit the IP to milk money out of its fans, the game feels like it was crafted by Warhammer fans for Warhammer fans. It's a mobile game. And like all games, it was designed to make money. But the remarkable amount of restraint they have put on the transactions, I think, is commendable. Overall, I give Tacticus an 8 out of 10. The game is free to play, and I wholeheartedly give it my recommendation. And I think that if you're a fan of Warhammer or games like this, you should definitely check it out. 